In the real world, it is now 2020. Here in this video series, it is still 2019. Headed into the second year of video production for this series, if you are ever curious about exactly when a video is produced versus what part of my life it's talking about, you can always go to one of the last screens in every video, that's the copyright page, and that will show you the exact date that I decided the video was done, and on my video uh, editing program, I clicked the button that would export it as a master video file for me to save and upload to social media, etc. So uh, that will show you exactly when I made the video, when I concluded it. And that will show you that, uh, you know, for example, in episode 15, I was making it in December, even though I was talking about May. I do hope in 2020 to really compress that distance so that the copyright date versus what I'm talking about are pretty much right on top of each other. To that end, we'd better get going. I feel that heading into 2020, my second year of video production on this series, is a good time to finally introduce you to my particular workout regimen. And I am confirmed in that thinking by some viewer feedback that I got just recently. There is a gentleman out there in his mid to late 20s who came across my YouTube channel and Instagram page and sent me a very encouraging note about how my publicizing of my efforts to get in shape have actually encouraged him to get back to the gym while he continues to deal with cancer in his life. I certainly hope the best for him as he uh, goes through the chemotherapy for that. I also hope he knows what his limits are in terms of working out. I don't know how uh, his particular cancer has affected his body. Um, but um, yeah, all the best there. You know who you are. I'm about to quote you. He has asked that uh, his story uh, not be publicized in, in my videos extensively uh, to keep his name out of it. So I'm just going to call him PG. Uh, we'll, we'll call that because I think he's pretty great. Um, but he was watching through uh, all of my videos. He's been offering feedback, and we've had some really good conversations over the past several weeks. Um, but he came across a video, I think it was video number eight, and he got all excited because he thought something was coming. And the next thing I knew, I got this message. Ugh, I thought this was going to be the episode where you talked about your workout regime. And maybe I should have even talked about it earlier, although my journal entries so far have been pretty much overviews. They haven't gotten into really specific detail about what I'm doing at the gym. So now's a good time to do that. I've mentioned before that there are all different types of regimens. There's a bodybuilding regimen, there are athletic regimens for various different sports and things like that. I am currently focused on a powerlifting regimen. When I first bolted out of the gate in 2011 and was in regular contact with Bill Haynes, a gym owner down in Bend, um, I got very enthusiastic about the idea of bodybuilding, and that's a particular regimen that is very concerned with the overall look, getting the big muscles, but then also shredding away the fat so that you can see all of this quality physique that you've crafted. I joined the monthly meetings of the Central Oregon Bodybuilders Association. I sat down with Bill and he gave me a direction to head. Um, I even joined the posing classes knowing that I was still a long way off. Um, I just wanted to get that practice in, get used to the kinds of things that would be going on on a competition stage. I got into it a little sooner than maybe uh, was the right way to do things. I don't know. Uh, maybe if I had been younger, it would have been the right way to do things. But um, over time... And starting in 2017 specifically, um, one of my other trainers, Mark Prickett, suggested that I try powerlifting. I think he could kind of see some of the frustration I was having um, just in, in really getting the discipline down 
for all the different elements you have to know for bodybuilding. Uh, if you go all the way back to my goals in the earliest episodes of this channel, I would still like to get there. I'd like to eventually, and before it's too late in my life, craft a body that I am darn proud of and willing to take on a competition stage. At my age, I would enter what's called the master's category. I'm already stuck there. I didn't think of this when I was a lot younger. But uh, So what I've got going now is a powerlifting regimen. Um, where was I? Mark Prickett came to me in 2017 and suggested that I do this. Um, uh, he suggested it in part because of his own personal taste. The uh, uh, body lifting... Uh, body... <laughs> Bodybuilding as a sport is very subjective. In fact, bodybuilding is entirely subject to the whims of the judges in the end. You go home with a trophy based on whether the judges liked you. So as opposed to some kind of sport like football, where you win based on whether you got the ball across the goal line uh, uh, more times than your opponent, where there's a very objective standard and you can tell who won, Bodybuilding is much more up for debate, and in fact, the debate rages after every competition. There are guys who go home saying, I was robbed. Um, you know, there are people who sit on the sidelines accusing the judges of being very political and biased, um, and that may all be true. I haven't really participated to know. Mark came to me and said, I think you would appreciate, with, with, your, with your love of keeping notes on all your workouts and all of your, your um, absolute and concrete stats, you might appreciate powerlifting. Because with powerlifting, when you compete, you either lift that weight or you don't. Um, there are some minor elements of judging. The judges decide whether you actually performed the, uh, the exercise without uh, a cheating motion without doing any kinds of, of cheats, whether you perform the full lift as defined. But after that, it's either you succeeded or you failed, and everybody in the audience can tell. So he gave me about four weeks of training in that before uh, life circumstances caused us to, uh, to call that particular session off. But I took that information with me, and I've gone forward since then on the powerlifting regimen. So uh, we're headed into basically my fourth year of doing this. Um, this doesn't mean I've been consistent at doing it. This doesn't mean I've always been right there five days a week at the gym and every time I'm there giving my best. But it does mean that when I go to the gym, this is what I'm focused on. Powerlifting is entirely focused on what are known as the three kings of resistance training. The bench press, the deadlift, and the squat. Under the heading of resistance training, there are two major categories of exercises. And one of those categories is the isolation exercises. Those are the exercises that move one muscle. They really do not rely on anything else. Probably one of the easiest to visualize here is the bicep curl. When performing a bicep curl, I'm holding the weight with my bicep elongated, and then I contract the bicep. No other muscle is needed to do a bicep curl. The other category is compound lifts, and that's where the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat come into play. In order to perform any of those exercises, you are using more than one muscle. I've demonstrated this briefly in the past, but again, with the bench press, for example, you are using the pectorals to pull the upper arms inward toward the chest, but you're also using the triceps to extend the forearms upward, and you're using the shoulders as well to help perform that movement. So three muscles are involved to lift a barbell from here to here. Between the bench press, the deadlift, and the squat, you work just about every muscle in your body. And that does include the core muscles, because in order to do a good squat or a deadlift or even a bench press, you do need to tighten up your abdomen muscles to provide some support. So among those three, or, or between all three of those exercises, you really work almost the whole body. 
There are many people who, in fact, only rely on those exercises for their strength gaining and their physical fitness because they do get such a complete workout using just those three. Uh, but those three then are figured into uh, the powerlifting regimen. It's all about increasing strength in those three lifts. I just described the bench press, but here you can see me doing it. Once again, it focuses on the pectorals, but then it also recruits the triceps and the shoulders to, uh, to help get the barbell up. It recruits the abdomen to provide core stability. Um, it technically recruits just a little bit of the glutes and on down into the feet to also provide support, but that is so minor I've never heard anyone count any of those muscles as being uh, exercised when doing a bench press. The deadlift is an exercise involving picking a bar up off the floor and ending in a standing position. The primary muscle group that it works is the lower back, but you do also recruit some leg muscles and it's helpful to have some strong traps and delts to really make this move uh, effective and strong. The third exercise is the squat and this is almost entirely concerned with strengthening the leg muscles. You have a bar on your shoulders, you go down into a squatting position, and then you push your way back up. So it works the quadriceps, the hamstrings, and the glutes. One of the main reasons Mark approached me in 2017 about powerlifting was to encourage me to enter a competition. He believed it would be motivating and inspiring for me. And although we have long since put off training together, and he has in fact moved out of town now, um, I am still interested in entering a competition. I have had my eyes on that idea for the past three years, um, and I currently have the uh, uh, ongoing encouragement from uh, a local gym, the Strength Warehouse. Their owners keep Instagramming me in, in private messages saying, so are you ready? Are you ready? Um, because we keep having powerlifting competitions in this area. And no, I'm not ready. And although uh, the people at Strength Warehouse keep telling me it's a great idea to simply enter one, no matter how uh, far you have to go, even if you are the weakest person there, to enter one and have that experience is just very helpful. And I can totally see their side of it. I have a personal standard I want to meet before I go to one. Even if I'm still the weakest guy there, I want to be able to lift a certain amount on all three of the power lifts before I actually enter a competition, even just to do it. Um, so I'm still working forward on that. That's a little preview there. Keep an eye on this video series. And uh, uh, the day I get there, of course, I will be sure to document as much of it as possible. Now I'm going to briefly outline exactly how I go about training to strengthen those exercises. What exactly is my rotation at the gym? I cannot speak for all powerlifters. I'm guessing there's a fairly diverse array of ideas on exactly how to improve one's strength in these three lifts. So this is the way that Mark taught me. Each of the lifts gets what's called a strength day, and that's where you focus specifically on that lift. If it's bench press day, the first thing you do is bench press. If it's deadlift day, the first thing you do is deadlift. And of course, if it's squat day, the very first thing you do is squats. On each of those days, then, after doing the primary lift, you go and do some auxiliary lifts, some supplementary lifts, uh, based on the muscles used. So, for example, and I don't have time to detail all of them, but, but for example, uh, if it's bench press day, and I start with a bench press, after I'm done with that, the next thing I do could be, uh, say, a, a dumbbell press. Maybe it could be an incline press some other variation of working the chest muscles and getting them strong. After that, I could go to focusing on one of the supplementary muscles, like the triceps. Maybe I could do overhead tricep extensions or skull crushers. Maybe I could work on the shoulders, since they help with the bench press. But I start by focusing on the main lift, and then I work on strengthening it from various different angles. Toward the end of the deadlift workout and toward the end of the squat workout, each of those workouts complements the other one. For example, after working on the deadlift and working on supplementary exercises for that, at the very end of the deadlift workout, I do one squat exercise. Whether it's an actual squat or maybe it is uh, quadriceps extensions or hamstring curls or uh, walking lunges or something like that, something that strengthens and prepares the legs for squats. At the end of the squat workout, I do something that prepares me for the deadlift workout. 
The bench press does not complement any other lift at the end of its workout. Instead, it has an entire day dedicated to the supplementary exercises designed to improve your overall bench press strength. This is called the bench press dynamic workout. On the bench press dynamic day, I focus on things like improving my explosive strength, getting the bar up fast, uh, or focused on specific aspects of the lift. Um, I, I did not know that you could really break it down into these, but there are lifts that focus on just going from the chest to halfway up, or just from halfway up to all the way up, and uh, just uh, different, different ways of affecting the muscle so that it is ready to lift the heaviest weight possible and get it into an extended position over the body. To ensure adequate rest between all of those exercises, they are organized like this on the rotation. We start with the bench press strength, and then I go to the deadlift strength, then I go to bench press dynamic, and then over to squat strength, and then back around again. I confess that having big arms is something I'd like to have, so Mark did say that because none of those lifts, none of those powerlifting lifts really do much for the biceps, if I wanted to give my body a break any time, I could squeeze into that rotation a bicep workout. And so generally, about once a round on every rotation, I do include a workout that is just about the biceps. The muscle group I have paid the least attention to historically throughout my entire life of fitness has been my core. And as much as I want to have abs, the fact that I neglect them as much as I do is pretty foolish. Um, so going forward, I probably should insert a day of core workout into that rotation as well. So perhaps uh, bench press strength and then deadlift strength and then biceps and then bench press dynamic squat strength and then core, something like that. Um, I haven't worked that all out yet, but I do need to start doing that. Um, plus, the abdomen does play into those three lifts, so having a stronger core can certainly not hurt the powerlifting. That was a very basic overview of the powerlifting regimen, and I do plan to go into detail in the future. I'm going to try to describe all three of the lifts in greater detail, as well as perhaps anything else I feel you need to know, or if you have questions on what you just saw and you want me to elaborate on a specific element of it, I'll be glad to. It does remind me, uh, it makes me think that now is a good time to bring up this screen that I put at the end of every video. You'll also find it in every workout magazine you might ever by. It is, of course, the, the standard disclaimer, um, and I, I put it in my videos because I'm not a personal trainer. I'm not your personal trainer. I'm not there supervising you. Um, it is a strong recommendation, especially if you are new, if you've been living a sedentary, non-active lifestyle before you go to the gym and start hitting it hard, check with a doctor. Get a physical. See where you stand. I've never done that, but I've also played it safe, maybe even too safe, over the past nine years because I don't like pain or phone calls in the middle of my narration. I don't like pain, and I certainly don't want to suffer any injury that would keep me out of the gym for any amount of time, let alone permanently. And I certainly would not want the same to happen to you. So... Check with your doctor. Check with uh, a personal trainer. A lot of gyms offer one free personal training session when you first join. Get some instruction on these things, and I think especially of the deadlift. Um, the squat can be very hazardous, but even worse from what I hear is the deadlift. If you do not do the deadlift right, and you've got a lot of weight on that bar, it can do things to your spine that will mess you up for the rest of your life. So... Um, yeah, so there's my disclaimer. Um, if you go to the gym and you try something I've told you about and you mess up your life because you did not play it safe, um, I'm sorry, but don't come suing me. That's all the time I have left in this episode. I hope that satisfied PG's curiosity about my powerlifting regimen, and I look forward to talking to you more in episode 17. Hey.